Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. As you all know, for, for the past few weeks, by popular demand, we've been uh, reconstructing all of the PDF exports of fun functionality, but this time including all of the extra fe features that people have long demanded, for example, CMYK. A big thank you to all of the pe people that have put your trust and your money into this pro project so that I can spend time making this feature a reality. If you'd like to join them, please consider jo joining my Patreon or my Lib LibrePay. I'll put the links in, in the description. Okay, so let's get on to the actual work itself. Um, first of all, I want to get into the um, uh, the testing problems. So as you know, I'm, I'm working with a library from Upstream. This is basically somebody else's code. And uh, that code is experimental. And so what it needs is it needs testing. And there are not users yet that can actually test the fun functionality. So we need to create computer programs that can test the functionality of this new piece of code. Um, for that, I have created what's known as a recorder, which basically takes an SVG and turns it into Python. Uh, Python is the scripting language that I'm using to um, create the, the, the extension. This might seem completely mad, but the idea is, is that it produces a, a piece of Python that the upstream developer can run as a test against their own code and confirm that all of the functionality that I've incorporated into this new PDF exporter continues to work into the future. And mostly this is to do with making sure that the API is stable and making sure that any changes that happen upstream uh, i.e. in code that I don't directly control, are uh, uh, immediately apparent to me and I can fix the, the issues as they crop up. Um, okay, so actual meat of functionality. The first thing is, is that uh, with stroking, i.e. creating lines around objects, we had almost all of the fun functionality in place, but we were missing dashes. Uh, this was a simple API addition, and I'm pleased to say that the... Um, all of the numbers from the SVG file, when inserted into a PDF file, work perfectly. There's no conversions necessary, which is exactly the kind of advance that I like. Not complicated, implemented, done. Uh, next came clipping. Now, clipping is interesting because in uh, an SVG land, you basically say, okay, this object or group or whatever has this clipping shape. Uh, for those who are not aware, a clipping ob object is basically a shape that defines which parts of the uh, children will show. Um, so imagine you've got a circle and a square bisecting each other, and the square is the is the clipping region. You'll end up with just the parts where the uh, square and the circle overlap. Um, so clipping in PDF land, though, is not done in the same way. And so if you're doing a shape cl clipping region, you have to draw the shape in the typical way and then mark it for clipping. And if you are doing a text, so this is where you have a piece of text that is a clipping region, you have to handle that in a special way, including all of the uh, transfer informations and various other bits and bobs that you need to, to do. And this is the thing that I didn't realize. You have to make sure that the, this is gonna sound so nerdy, but, the graphical state does not change. So basically you cannot go into a graphical state and then come out of one because you will lose your text clipping region. Okay, with <laughs> that ner nerdiness out of the way. Um, the text stuff that I was wor working on is an ongoing pro project. So I managed to implement all of the uh, manual kerns. This is where, how the letters are spaced apart from each other. I've implemented as best I can most of the uh, natural PDF fun functionality, i.e. just inserting the, the numbers from the SVG into the uh, PDF file. But uh, a lot of the text layout work uh, still doesn't work, um, which I kind of expected, you know, for, for right to left, uh, top to bottom text where there's no extra manual kerns, you're not rotating any of the, the letters, all of the stuff that you probably never do yourself, but like somebody somewhere out, out there is going to, uh, that stuff do doesn't work yet. But text by itself, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, and I just need to annotate the flowed text. Um, I've been working with David uh, Burroff again about his scientific Inkscape extension, asking him some quick questions about how he implemented text 
layout and whether I need to copy his code or implement something similar. Uh, but we'll see how, how that goes. Okay, so that's the that's the PDF work. That project continues. Um, next up is the Bug Accelerator pro program. This is the Inkscape Prompt project itself that's paying me to basically fix bugs for the 1.3.1 release. This is where if you have downloaded 1.3 and you found an issue and reported it, um, there's a good chance that it will be tagged for 1.3.1. I will get to fix it. I will be paid to fi fix it, which is awesome. And uh, so what have we got? We've got um, problems with escaping uh, carriage return li line feeds in um, basically text fields. It should have all, all only applied to attributes, but it was being applied to more than that when you exported to plain SVG. So plain SVG was broken in subtle ways. Sorry about that. Um, there was a crash when editing page size sizes and, and labels and hitting undo. That's been fixed. There's four bugs fixed with the PDF importer. This is importer, not exporter, um, to do with selecting the correct font name, depending upon what uh, po postscript font name was in the PDF file. Uh, that piece of fun fun functionality has been cleared up. It's, it's a bunch of research that I actually did many weeks ago, and then I created a text file with a bunch of notes in it, and that is all co coalesced into the exact fix that I wanted. I'm very proud of that. Um, there's a fix for de de deleting nodes when you're using a live path effect. Um, there's a uh, command line fix when you are trying to export multiple SVG files. Basically, you want to convert like an entire directory full of SVG files into PNG files, for, for example. That was broken. Sorry about that. Uh, that's been fixed. Um, fixed a live path effect uh, dialog when you're using the specific LP show nodes. That crashed if you pressed cancel. Oops. Um, fixed a, a styling issue if you had uh, gradients or patterns applied to a piece of text and you used text object to path, uh, the gradients disappeared. That's been fixed. Um, there's a small user experience fix to do with highlight colors to make sure that the highlight color preference applies correctly to the node editing tool. That's been fixed. And some documentation fi fixes, especially for the man page for the new command line tools stuff that we did for the multi-page work. Okay, so that's what I've been up to. Um, it's, it seems like a busy week, but actually that bug list is actually two weeks worth of bugs. Um, in other Inkscape news, we actually have a pretty quiet week, I would say. Uh, most of the work has been from Daniel Boyles and some from Tav doing the GTK4 work. There hasn't been a lot of other work going on right now. It's the summertime. Most of our European friends are on holiday. Um, and that's probably about it. Uh, one thing I would say, oh yes, um, Patreon supporters. There's been some rumors that pa Patreon have been changing their um, uh, service provider for like who does who does the actual uh, money hand handling or the bank or something like that. And some people's um, subscriptions are being rejected. Uh, that happened last month to some other patrons and it may happen to me this month. So do d double check if you get like an e email or something. Um, okay, that's everything. Thank you so much for li listening to this update, and I will see you all next week.